Well, Bear, I was gonna do the. I was gonna challenge you to do the mannequin challenge with me, but I guess I've just been informed that I don't know what the mannequin challenge actually. Well, is. and the camera can't be stationary. In this case, we're stationary, so. So you uh, do know the rules of the. I do know the rules challenge. of the mannequin challenge. I saw some Craig students this morning on uh, Twitter that had done it or Facebook. I'm not sure, but uh, hey. I thought you just had to just like. Which that's normally what I'm doing no. at my desk anyway, so I wouldn't <laughs> think it'd be that difficult, really. What do I do with my hands? I don't, I don't know. know. Who knows? Well, you know. whatever. Yeah. We'll let people do. That. I don't know what. Is that like this we'll weird version to... of the Harlem Shake? I or think something? so. Yeah, I think it's similar. Yes. Uh, testing my weird knowledge. Or the ice bucket challenge, things, or something like that. Yeah. Is there a charity involved with this mannequin? I don't challenge? think so. Unless maybe there should be. Like it's a department store or something. Yes. To buy more mannequins. I don't know. Give that to my sure, yes. mannequins. Well, anyway, we'll get to of that and. Uh, I know you're in a you're in a full on rage today after this recent news. So we'll, I am. We'll get to that right away. Here, All right, good. Uh, as we start this week's episode of Extra Points. I can see the the steam coming out of your ears, Bear. I'm torqued. John Barry over here. I'm Eric Schmolt. We work for the sports department at the Gazette, and we, we do. also get together with you folks out there that watch us every week and try to talk about some local sports. And in this case, uh, before we came on, kind of almost breaking news. By the time this goes up, I suppose it won't be. But no, no. Uh, I know you're very angry. The Badgers will be playing on a Friday night next year. They're ridiculous. Come on. I mean, how much more exposure do you need in a conference that's making money hand over foot? And now you're going to go up against the sacred high school Friday night lights with a game against Utah State. It just, uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I understand they want more exposure, but... I think the Big Ten is fine the way it's been. I think the Saturday games with an occasional game before the high school season starts is fine. But Friday night at 7 o'clock, uh, you're going against every other football, high school football school in the state. And I just, I don't like it. Do you? I don't know. I'm kind of, uh, I see both sides of it. I mean, I don't think they're, the Big Ten is lacking for any funding or money at this point. So I don't know why they needed to go for the money grab. But I also don't know... I'm not irate like you are, I guess. I think the people that are super tuned into high school football are still going to go to those, game, that, those games. If they have season tickets to the right. Badgers, they'll sell them to somebody else, and that person probably wasn't going to go to a high school game anyway. I know this is kind of the recruiting angle where players would like to go to Madison for the games or the coaches would like to get out to watch our Friday night games, but I feel like there's a for high school, there's eight other weekends, and for college, there's eleven other weekends where you can get these things done. I don't, I don't know that it's necessary, but I don't think that I'm really all that. Well, angry and I about think it. obviously I'm not that mad. I just think we're gonna have to let it play out. And there's see what plenty of people that are. I mean, yeah. there's people on Twitter that I mean, lose their minds. Let it play out, but I feel, I think I feel sorry for the smaller towns where you know sometimes Badger game days are are really big for them. You know, I mean. And uh, now it's if it's on a Friday night, I look at a town like Darlington. You know, I mean, Friday nights are so big for them, and now you throw in a Badger game, and you know that's something that a lot of those people that's what they look toward to on Saturday is to watch the Badgers. And now you're you're kind of caught in the crosshairs. And like you said, I know it's only one week, but I just think why not Thursday night? You know, why not? Uh, you know, why not one night earlier? And then if you don't play again till that following Saturday, or if you can have a bye the next Saturday, so you don't have that short week. I mean. I just think there's other avenues that they could have looked at, and uh, but like I say, let's see it play out and see what happens. Right, I guess we'll have to see it one year yeah. and see if right, you maybe know, it's some, not pe be some that people are saying deal. that the high school teams are going to change their games to Thursdays and Saturdays. I don't know that that's going to be. I don't know if that's really going to be. A, it seems like a knee jerk reaction to me as well. There's also the, uh, you, you know. I guess the teams that really get hurt are the teams that are home that weekend right. for high school because yeah. you know you already have your kind of your base. You're going to have the parents of the kids that are playing and your diehard high school fans are going to be there every Friday no matter what. But it's drawing in the casual Friday football fan who says, oh, it's an early season, the weather's still good, maybe I'll get out and just check well, and, out and, a game. And you're going to lose the, you're going to lose the ticket. And, and what in years past? What if, what if Parker Craig fell on that night? You know that wouldn't that would that would be too bad right. because in a city like this that really bleeds Badger red, it would be too bad to butt heads with the Parker Craig game because that's the biggest game of the year. And I haven't looked at the schedule for next year. I'm pretty sure it's not on September first, but let's say down the road it is. I mean that's that's somebody's rivalry problems. game is yeah, probably is probably going to be affected yeah. by it. Yep. Uh, not not ideal. I, I understand the people who are super mad about it. I don't feel super mad about. it. I'd like to see. Let's see it one year. Right. I agree. And if it's a disaster. 
then it's then we can talk yeah. about it again. And yep. if it's not, then maybe mm -hmm. it'll just whatever it is, is whatever. Yeah. Kind of like the McRib. I mean, it's you know you got to try it and <laughs> go from there. <laughs> Some people would probably disagree with you. Okay, just say, maybe right. we don't need to try that. <laughs> is that still out there? Is that I thing? think you could get it once a year. I think, but I'm not sure. Um, let's talk about the Badgers quick. Uh, okay. Kept transitioning off of that. Um, they found a way to get it done at Northwestern. I don't mm -hmm. think it was the. I don't think anybody DVR'd it and was watching it over and mm -hmm. over this week because no. it was not all that fun to watch. But uh, you know they hadn't won there in a while. Got it done. Uh, then we had to, the weird, awkward spot of having to root for Ohio State, which I never like to do, but uh, I'm also never going to root for the, the Cornhuskers. No, so not at all. There was, to see them get throttled was fine with me, and now the Badgers are set up. Uh, you guys, three games left, probably the, three of their easiest games of the season, yep. you would hope, and uh, they have their pit way paved to the Big Ten Championship game. And that's all you can ask for. And, and again, if you'd have come into the season and at this point would have said that you know, they would be 7-2 and two and ranked 7th in the country or 8th, whatever they are, I would have said, okay, sign me up, and here we are. And Illinois, Purdue, Minnesota, certainly three games are going to be heavily favored in. That brings us to the Big Ten Championship game where I think you and I both agreed we'd rather play Michigan than Ohio State just because I think they match up better. But just to get to that point is, is crazy. I mean, it's crazy to think of the fact that, you know, right now when you look at Wisconsin, the basketball team's ranked ninth, the football team's ranked 7th, the women's hockey team is ranked first. The volleyball team is ranked second. The cross country team is ranked in the top fifteen. This is at Wisconsin. Like women's soccer, maybe yeah, in some I mean, this tournament. Is, this is Wisconsin. Uh, the bad, for the men's hockey team actually is, looks is, a little better. Is better is competitive. Granado's got them going. I mean, it's just think about it. This is a upper Midwest city where it snows half the year, and you know you're competing with the southern schools, and yet right now we might have the best athletic program in the country. I mean, and that's from where we were twenty years ago. When you and I were in school, that's crazy. I was already thinking this way when I was in school. I know. Because that was when the hockey team was winning yeah. national championships and the Badgers were winning Big Ten championships which at that time. was yeah. a huge feat. It's uh, just, and it's, it's just hard gone, to fathom. And gone further and further every year. Yeah. And, and like you said, with the football team, you know, let's get healthy, get these wins, focus on the Big Ten championship game. And, and I don't think there's any doubt Wisconsin wins the Big Ten championship game. They will be one of the top four teams. They will be in the playoffs. It will be interesting to see how that shakes out. I don't think many people will give them a chance no. to win there. No, uh, no. Alabama would beat the them. Alabama no, I mean would beat the them by Ten. three touchdowns. I mean yeah. in the Big Ten title right. game, maybe. right? Because you, you go back to two years ago or three years ago when Ohio State beat us 100 to nothing or whatever the heck it was. But no, I agree. But you know, just getting there, we know we can play with those teams. We've proven that. I think my big thing is, and uh, we've probably said it in this room for like five straight weeks, or maybe it's seven at this point, but. Can we please use these three hopefully easy games to figure out who the quarterback, quarterback is? Quarterback is, yes. Because I don't think they really have one, but we need to figure out one. Because we do. If we go into a Big Ten title game, and I mean, to even be thinking about a national being in the playoff, right? And you know, the quarterback, there's no, no quarterback. No, and I and Hornerbrook just to me just throw the ball, Alex. Just throw it. I mean, you underthrew PB last week. The throw into the end zone was short, short arm. Just throw the ball. Let it go. He wants to lob everything in Houston. You know, Bart seems to make plays, but then he'll have a bonehead play the next time. And it, it's, I agree with you, you know, pick a quarterback, stick with him. I know it's nice to have a, a reliable backup, which we've had, but I, I'm I'm with you. Let's, well, let's go I mean, with a one-man it's, committee. It's kind of worked. I mean, when Houston's come in, he's led some drives and things like that. But it, if we're getting to the big, to these championship right. games, and what's it's winning, not going to work there. So what's, what's winning the us games right now? Point, right. Our defense. Yes. The defense is winning the games now. So, I mean, you know, if we give up seven points a game, I mean, you and I could quarterback and probably find a way to win. Well, I could. I, you're, I'm, I've seen you drop back. Your skills aren't what they used to be. I don't have be, the footwork. No, you don't. No. You're kind of, you get kind of panicky in the pocket, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of finding a way to win, uh, Whitewater, still unbeaten. They've had their share of close games. Another one against River Falls. Yeah. Uh, Good wake-up call. Still unbeaten, and they've got one game left and if they win uh we'll see the bracket on sunday but there'll be a one there'll, there'll be a one seed, seed in the yeah. west and won't have to see mount union until the uh stag bowl which boy that'd be a shock if whitewater and mount union played in the stag bowl that it's never happened before um since like every other since year. every year yeah no but i mean the warhawks i won like i say i was covering state soccer um you know and and saw twitter that they were in overtime and i thought wow that's what? that's <laughs> what's going on it's river falls i mean i was surprised by that but Maybe it's a good wake-up call. Maybe Coach Bullis, you know, those kids quit reading all the clippings and everything else and say, hey, look, we got to show up and play. And they found a way to win. Good teams will do that. And now 
put that behind you, move on, and, and focus on the task at hand because the playoffs are two weeks away. Um, they've had their share of injuries too, yeah, so they got to they got to get healthy here. Yep. Patterson was a you know you hope right. he's okay. Right. So we'll see what happens with the Warhawks. Um, you mentioned state soccer. We both got a chance to go over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Delvin Darien winning a second state championship in three years. Elkhorn, uh, maybe a surprise team to even get there, wins uh, the runner-up. Uh, Southern Lakes uh, soccer. Boy, that was stepping impressive. up. Impressive. Yeah. And, you know, start with Elkhorn because obviously they were in a position where, were they happy to be there? Yes. Were they competitive? Certainly. They won their first game. And then I think just Whitefish Bay, just a better team. You know, the program, and, that program is just yeah, better. Yeah, I mean, that, it's, that, it's those dumb. kids were better. BZ Kaiser said the same thing. He said, you know, they're, even their defenders could probably move to midfield or sweeper and be just as good as the ones they have. And he said they have several Division One recruits. And he said, uh, you know, they keep you back on their heels because they pass so well. And he said he, the good point he made, and you don't think about it, is in soccer, you don't play a lot of back-to-back -back games, you know, at, at that level. And he said, because we're so defensive and we like to stay back, it took a lot out of our legs. And he said, we were, we had some tired legs uh, that second game. And um, Can't you know, have that against a team that was already you know, just going to be a big favorite. Well, yeah, exactly. So, and then as far as the comments I think, go. Uh, let's just, yeah. uh, I mean, I'll just say like the Kazers have really built that program up over the yeah. last few years since, uh, since Jordan, I guess, started going through there, and now he's kind of helping his dad coach over right. there. And yep. it's just pretty cool to see the program be built up to yep. that spot. And obviously, Whitefish Bay, I think, is a program that's been entrenched for like two decades. Right. So that's where you're all trying to get to. And I think yep. uh, for the Elkhorn team, that I mean, they're on they're on the right track. And, and even afterward, usually, you know, when teams lose that state title game, there's a lot of tears, and there were some tears, I think, for the seniors that that were on the team, but. They had no trouble hosting that uh, the the silver ball because they realized that hey, what we did was pretty special and and we're young, and and we can build off of that and uh, I think that's what they'll do and, and I think it's a it was a good story with, not the perfect ending but certainly uh, runner up at state. There's nothing to be ashamed of there. And the Delvin Darien program alive and well with Mike Mars as well and Crazy. I don't think they're going anywhere. They did have 15 seniors but uh, plenty of talent that's coming back and. Uh, as you kind of alluded to, that they could have won three in a row. Uh, kind of stumbled on their way to state last year, yep. but won it in 2014, uh, won it in 2016 in Division Three, and uh, you know, just they just they're so skilled. They are, and and that's that's the weird thing. I and mean, we talked about this last week. I'm not a huge soccer person. I'm starting to understand the sport a little bit more. But there were times where I just put down my pen and paper and just watched. I just watched whether it was Tigrio or whoever it might have been, just watch their skill level and watch them control the ball and, and pass and, and just watch what, like, kids that don't have the ball, what they're doing. You know, they're making that diagonal cut or they're, you know, getting it deep into the zone. And, you know, they scored the two girls two goals early. And I think Mike Mars thought, you know what, maybe we had a little letdown, and I think they did. And then the last 10 minutes, Ricardo Huerta stood on his head. I mean, he made three of the most incredible saves you'll ever see and he said afterward, he said, I felt like I let my team down last year when we lost to Whitnall. He said I wasn't going to let it happen today, and he didn't. And he, he stood on his head, and he was clearly the MVP of that game. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it can, was. And it's nice to see them redeem themselves a little bit. I know they were hurt by that loss last year yep. after going undefeated in the regular season. And, you know, everybody loves a good kind of and, redemption and, story. And great kids with a, with a coach who's about as level-headed and doesn't take any credit for anything but – what a great job he's done with that program. Yeah, I like both those programs over yep. there. Both think, those coaches, too. I don't too. think they're going anywhere. Nope. So nope. it'll be kind of fun to watch. And it's kind of cool that they're, what, 10 minutes apart. Too, right, you yeah, know? exactly. And it was kind of cool to see him. I wrote about it a little bit over the weekend. I mean, usually those are two teams when you're that close, you're going to be, you're not really rooting for each other very right. often. It's like Craig rooting for Parker. It just right. doesn't really happen. But uh, to see the fans kind of show up over at State and root each other on. Yeah, it was uh, cool. Playing back-to-back -back both nights was kind of cool, too. I mean, and perfect just weather. Just worked out. Perfect was, weather for that It was that a great weekend. Year. I mean, the weather was unbelievable. We might have made a soccer fan out of yeah, you there. We, well, like I say, if you, can, if you can get me to watch those schools all the time, I'd be more than happy to cover, yeah. Um, the other high school things we got going on, let's get to football in a second, but okay. let's mention State Swim this weekend, yep. girls' side. Uh uh, Aaron Donegan from Craig, I think the big story around here with yeah. the chance to uh, medal on two the events. Podium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 200 IM, and I think she's ranked seated third or fourth, and then the uh, 100 breaststroke also in the top four. So, you know, the, a junior who, you know, it's that time of the year where, again, you and I don't know enough about it, but this is back to the old tapering thing, getting everything out and really being fresh for the state meet. And you'll see times come down, and, and that's from everybody, not just her, but, you know, if she can – 
get a couple of top five finishes, boy, that's a that's a great way to end your season, and I I expect that she will. And we got a couple other area swimmers that are. Yep, uh, Dreamer and Kramer from Melton, a couple of girls that uh, you know again Melton's Division One, Division for the first One, time, which yeah. which which hurts the Red Hawks because. They've been so good in Division Two for so long, but hey, well, that's all part of the enrollment and how things work. But uh, you know, it, it's too bad you and I talked about this. Friday night's fun because it's Division Two and it's you know it, there's a lot of excitement. But the problem with Saturday is it it butts head with the Wisconsin football game, which is homecoming. Parking is atrocious. There's nowhere to park. There's nowhere to go. Yeah. It's a mess, and it's too bad because those girls deserve better and uh, you and I talked about maybe moving that back to Thursday Friday and getting away from that Saturday afternoon where you're button heads with the Badgers because um, with the construction everything around the hospital as it is there's just nowhere to park it's all just gonna it's, I don't know, it's, it's gonna just gonna crazy I don't know yeah. what they're gonna do I really don't uh, on the football side of things we got the state semifinals state this semis, week yep and uh, two area teams still rolling and both of them I think involved with uh, just classic different different matchups because yeah. uh, both teams it's going to be a run oriented versus a pass oriented team and we're going to have to see how things kind of shake out uh, let's start in division 1 badger going up against uh, well, franklin by franklin yes franklin badger obviously a team that we've written about they you know they'd like to run the ball 50 60 70 times keep the ball for 8 minutes at a time and just wear the clock down and wear your defense down and uh, Franklin, a team that likes to chuck it around. They so. do. Um, Max Alba is the is the Franklin quarterback. Pretty good stats. He played nine games. I don't know why he missed a couple. I don't know if it was an injury or what. But uh, in nine games, he's about 240 yards a game, 24 touchdowns. I think he's thrown for over 2,000 yards and a couple of stud receivers. But, again, I, I have trouble counting out the Badgers or, or thinking they're not going to win because they just find a way. And they – you know, uh, Tim Simon from Middleton said they're undefeated for a reason. That's a good football team, and Tim's, uh, you know, he's seen enough good teams through the years. So I think the Badgers, a tough draw for them because Franklin's, you know, certainly a team that I expected to be in the championship along with Kimberly. But the Badgers just keep finding a way, and I hope under with Mason Dumay leading the way, I I would love to see them, you know, once again prove people wrong and and get a chance to play at Camp Randall. And it's fun to watch. You don't usually. I, it's hard to say. It's fun to watch a team that loves to run the ball like three or four yards, yeah, and, and just move the chains, and grind and, it. Yeah, but they, it is a fun system because they they can go different ways each week, and Dumay always seems to get his. But we talked about it last week a little, like uh, the it was Wat, Watrous two weeks ago, then it was Keller again this yep. past week, and you don't know, you know, which which right. hand are they going with, yep. or which direction are they going, and. They they just they just keep able to get and there's it done. nothing better from a coaching standpoint to have maybe five or six base plays that you're going to run and the other team knows you're going to run it and it's basically well try to stop us right. and they can't and it's frustrating because you, like you said you get four yards of carry you're going to get a first down every time you have the ball you know every series and it's and you're de- as a defender you think oh we only gave up four yards that's pretty good but yeah. when they do that nine times in a row yep. that's three first downs yep. and, and you're five marching down minutes the field. off the clock yeah. and it's like and, uh, <laughs> Dang and it. that, nothing's going to change friday night and, and, and when you look at clinton it's the same thing tony vice is the top ranked quarterback in the state for um cedar grove for belgium. cedar grove belgium he leads the state with 50 touchdown passes uh he's about 300 yards per game right around 295 something like that he's safe, safe to say clinton hasn't seen this kind i know of and, offense and, all and year. jeff spivak when i talked to him earlier said you know what a contrast he goes we go from one of the state's best running backs evan gates kid from lancaster who now leads the state in rushing to basically the state's top drop back passer who at 6'3 he said he's about 200 pounds he stands back there and a lot of quick strikes quick passes and jeff said you know, it's a challenge, but it's it's one that we're looking forward to. And, and you've talked about it, and I've talked about it. With well, that secondary led by Jordan Jones, athletic. And uh, they'll make plays. Jeff said we've got to get pressure up front on the quarterback. But, you know, in the same sense, you've got Cedar Grove Belgium's got to prepare for a no-huddle Clinton offense that's not easy to prepare for either. So uh, you're right. Two Both, both games. games. It's, just, yeah, it's just kind of interesting how that interesting. rushed out, isn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> I is. Don't, I, you know, and it's who's to say it. I, I think to this point, a lot of years in the playoffs, these passing teams would have fallen out maybe right. by now. Uh, maybe not all of them, but right. some of them, because the weather would be weird one well, week. And, and so I, we've had, we haven't we had, had that had weather that yet, to no. take it out. And I talked to Jeff, and, of course, he won't let me pick him. He said, you got to pick us to lose because it goes right up on our locker room bulletin board. And I said, okay. So I picked him to lose by one. But 
I got a feeling the Cougars are going to find a way to win. I really yeah, do. That would be. I don't. Yeah, I don't know all the stories around the state, and obviously there's only going to be 14 teams that right. get there. I don't know how you would find a better story around the state if they if they get there. Uh, you're exactly right because they, so they've many won of the teams, one one playoff one game playoff ever game. in their history. Before and so this many year. of the teams that are going to be there have been there before. And right. that's what I touched on this week in my football weekend column was just how it, it's the same old, same old, but not for a school like Clinton and a community that right now is riding it and. Uh, There'll be a large caravan making the trip to Slinger. I can guarantee you that. I will say this too. Uh, Coach Spivak's been passed over for some jobs around here. Yes. Uh, how's that worked and out? I <laughs> hope some administrations have taken note. I mean, good yeah. for Clinton. They've got a, yeah. a young and up and coming coach and a guy who's a the athletic he loves director it. now. He loves so it there. Yeah. Good. Good for him to make it there. But I just. I think some people missed they this missed, a little bit. They missed the boat on and him. Yes, so, they did. <laughs> so congrats to him and the Cougars for getting to where they're at. And hopefully, exactly. Hopefully yep. it keeps going. Yep. Uh, and then I guess we can't we can't get out of here without talking about a little Packers panic because, Woo! oh, man. You lose at home to the Colts, this Colts team. Pretty right? sad when the it takes a squirrel to energize a crowd at Lambeau Field. That's, <laughs> that's pretty sad. You know, I mean, you run the opening kickoff back, and then they run another one back about 60-some yards, and, Rodgers is complaining, and McCarthy's on the hot seat, and they don't have any running backs. And man, you would think Title Town has turned into the sky's falling. Yeah, it is, boy. I mean, don't look up. But you know, I mean, some of it's valid. Uh, you know, McCarthy, yeah, he's got a Super Bowl, but I mean, the Packers are nine and eleven in their last twenty games. I mean, that's that's not what's been the norm in in Green Bay. Yeah, they were the favorite to win the Super Bowl before. And they Super still Bowl. might win their division because Minnesota might not win another game. Hey, the Lions though. Baby. The Lions are right there. Yes. This team's coming on. Yeah, okay. All I don't right. know. I still think with the Packers, they need to get a run. They just need to get a running back. They do. If that means Starks comes back, or eventually Lacey can get himself back, or they, you know, find somebody off the scrap heap. You need to. Br- you have to have a running back. This is, you do. I mean, what, you're in the NFC North, and you have a, t- a team that doesn't have a running back. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, and I don't understand that, and I don't understand their. Personnel decisions, but hey, it's it's Ted Thompson and again. We well, at some about point it. you got to get over your stubbornness. And well, you do get a running back. Get a running back. They traded for Nile Davis. He lasted two games. Then Jackson off this, like I say, the scrap heap. He wasn't even good enough to make the opening day roster, and and now all of a sudden you thrust him into a position where he's got to kind of carry the load. Montgomery's been banged up. I mean, it's it's a mess. And you know, I heard Joyke Bell was the name I heard they were talking about bringing in, but I somebody. Mean, yeah. Do something. Yeah, you can't, you can't have time at Montgomery as your running back. No, you uh, can't. Cobb hasn't worked there this mm-hmm. year. Teams aren't falling for. No, it, it, you can't. Just, you can't convert work. somebody mid-season to a position where a, yeah, he played it at one point, but he hasn't played it in a while. And Ty Montgomery's not very big. No, I mean he'll get eaten up. You need to find a running back. They do. I agree. Um, and Matthews now they has go, got to get back in the field. And now they go on the road three games in three row, games so. in a row. And and again, you would have thought looking back they were certainly winnable games, but. You know, Tennessee, Washington, and Philly are all teams now that have had some success. So here I mean, and there, yeah. You I mean, know, they're, we'll just, see. They're, they're all just like the Packers, basically. Yeah. You never, on a weekly basis, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Mm-mm. And so they're, I think they're going to be in for some tough, they bet, tough they, roads. They here. better go two and one. Let's put it that way. That'll make them what six and five. Six and five, and I don't you know, know if that really. I don't know if that's good enough. Gets but people off the. If they go one and two, or, or, not, or God forbid, zero oh and three, um, some heads are going to roll. What else are we missing? Jets with another sweep. Jets now with they go another to sweep. Two week Alaska trip. That's oh always boy. Uh, they always circle that and look circle forward to that. that. That's a fun bus ride. <laughs> I think they get to. They get oh, to take I think they get out of charter. Okay, all right. I think it's probably a a, a commercial. It flight. It probably but. is, and then you take the crop duster for that final <laughs> twenty five miles or whatever it is. And, uh, tape an episode of Cops and just go and watch we'll get, things. We'll get this basketball next week. Badgers open yep. at the end of this week. They do. Uh, by the time we girls t- basketball next starts week's next show, week, have, there's some games next will, week. Yeah, they'll have, a, they'll have one game under their belts by the time we get out next week. But yep. we'll be talking to coaches this week, so we'll have a little more preview of that yep. then. And we'll see if uh, we're headed to Camp Randall for any okay. football. All right. right. Sounds good. High school. Not, High school. Not, not, the, Badgers. not the Badgers. Uh, we'll see you back here next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you want to leave a comment, you can email us at sports at gazetteextra.com or find us on Twitter or any of the other fun YouTube, ways. Facebook, any Call Sound Off, tell yes. Bear how terribly is it is and things like yep. that. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be alone, but nope. you have too much time on your hands. Yes. And uh, we'll see you back here next week. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Go Bucky.